think let's get started. I need a drink because it's Friday and the reason that I have not had a YouTube episode in forever is because I actually filmed one in like February and then my camera shut itself and it recorded the entire video without sound <laughs> and it was so good. So I just kind of gave up on YouTube for a second but now I'm back to update you because it's been literally like four or five months since I've done an update. And um, I bought this bottle of Red Home. I mean, you're not technically meant to get high in your own supply, but it's time. It's time to conquer the <laughs> makeup YouTube episode, forget about the deleted one, get back in the swing of things. Originally, I think I said I was gonna do these like every week and then it became every month and now it's like every four months and that's just not really good enough. So I'm gonna do my best to get back on track with these. Cheers. If you haven't tried our red yet, you freaking have to. It's so good. I'm doing a little campaign on it at the moment because look at her, she's so cute. And the back, there's little mini blogs on the back of all our bottles, if you didn't know. So each bottle has a story. So anyway, cheers. Let's have a sip before we even get started. <laughs> oh. It's literally my favorite red wine, like ever. Not even just because I made it, but it's my favorite red wine just ever. It tastes so freaking good. Okay, so how are we? How are you guys? Hopefully you're enjoying following along with the one up the brand journey and oh my God, so much has happened since our little what happened in 2020 recap. And so it should, it's literally six months later. It's half a year is gone. We're halfway through 2021. And I'm really, really proud of my progress. A lot has changed, so I have little notes. <laughs> to go through of what I spoke about. Actually, I'm gonna test this and make sure they're sound. One second. Okay. We good. We Gucci. It works, there's sound. I did a little trial run and then I have like filmed it because I need to put more stuff on my social media that's video. And as we know, my strength is not social media, but at the moment I am back running my own social account, so I don't have any help at all anymore. Kind of, I'll get into that, I have, a, I have a story. Let's talk about what happened between the last video, so I think that was like January this year, and July, so it's now mid-July. Actually, I need a prop for this, damn it, one sec. Um, I just realized I don't have any of my own product left, which is a whole freaking story in itself. But what you missed is we came out with a whole new product. These were our wine pouches. You can't really see the lighting's a bit. We had rosé, we had red, and obviously we had white. So we had these little wine pouches and oh my God, they went off their tit. They literally sold out in like hours. I think we launched it on a like Friday evening, I wanna say. Nick and I put the pouches up on the website and they were gone by Saturday. <laughs> so then we did another round of the pouches and then they sold out just as quickly. And then the reason that I don't have any now is because we came up against, <sighs> oh my God, so many issues. But the main one was that our original pouches kept breaking in transit. So it was just like so much freaking drama with the courier company. We ended up, I ended up sacking the courier company and moved and like having all these insurance claims. By the way, do you know when they break your product, you then have to like surrender the rest of them. So anything that you say you can't sell. So what happened is some of these were breaking in transit and then because when they break, they don't get delivered to the customer, they go back to, we worked with Aramex, so Aramex Fastway, it's like the same brand. It goes back to the Aramex office, they take photos of the whole thing, they file a report, it sits in their office, then they send it back to my warehouse, and then I pick them up. So by the time that whole shit show has happened, I don't know where they've been, I don't know what heat they've been on, 
And because there's like rancid wine all through the box, all through any merchandise you guys have bought, all through the paper shavings that I had, all through the cardboard, the whole thing smelled so bad. So there's just no way I'm gonna resell those pouches. So I had to forfeit all the pouches that went. So some people bought a lot of pouches in one. <laughs> like they were being sold in sets of three and some people buy like three or four sets of three and all of them had to be forfeited. So my inventory levels and my stock just plummeted and hardly anyone was actually receiving the pouches. So obviously that's a fucking drama and a half and I had to do something about that ASAP. So basically I had to file an insurance claim for all of it. I had to surrender, which is such a dramatic word, but I had to surrender all the pouches to Aramex Fastway so they knew that I wasn't then reselling it and claiming on insurance. The paperwork to do the insurance claim, honestly, was not even worth my time with the amount that I was getting back from these because there are different options to, uh, to figure out insurance. You can either claim based on what it costs to make the product or you can claim based on what you're selling it for. And both have different lots of paperwork and just, oh man, like, I'm glad I did it because I wanted to learn. Like I figured even if I'm not getting much back from it and it's just a loss and it costs my time, I kind of want to learn how these processes work because I know for sure as we scale, things are gonna happen. And the more familiar I am with these processes on a smaller scale, the better I'm gonna be when things go big. So anyway, I did the whole insurance thing. I did the whole surrender thing. <laughs> I ended up not working with them anymore. I'm now shipping only through Australia Post, which is great. They haven't broken anything so far. So <laughs> fingers crossed, everyone keeps getting all their products because some people, some of you were saying that you weren't even receiving your Aramex like deliveries, even the second time that I sent it. So I don't know what was going on there. I guess this is a part of being a startup and an entrepreneur is you've got to figure out what works, what doesn't. I am the customer service team right now. I am picking and packing. I am <laughs> everything. So yeah, that was that was really challenging launching those pouches. But the good news is, and the thing that I'm focusing on is that they sold out twice in hours as soon as we put them online. So I'm running with this idea. I've done a ton of research and product development in the background over the last few months. I am so excited to be able to launch these pouches and to show you everything that I have been working on and to just to see the whole thing come together. I got a whiteboard over here which has all the steps that I need to for the pouches. So I branch things out, I write what I want in the middle, so pouch 2.0, and then I write all the different things that need to happen and then I number them all. So at the moment I have, well actually there's a fair few things that haven't happened yet, but I've put them in motion. So all the product sampling, all the actual wine tasting is happening over the next 30 days. So I'm so excited for that. The actual pouches are gonna be better than ever. I have found a manufacturer. We have a great relationship. I can't tell you too much because a lot of this is in literally development and secret squirrel mode. And I don't wanna tell people how I'm doing it because then you're gonna copy it. And even though all my shit's trademarked, I don't want you to have that information because it's my product and I'm excited to get it to the market. But the actual packaging is happening. I have worked out the costs associated with that. We're figuring out some of the technicalities of making this product long lasting. How do, how do I even tell you this without giving away exactly where we're up to? Like, I just don't know. And that's partly why I haven't come and done one of these videos because I know that I'm meant to be keeping things like super zipped, but I'm really not good at that. <laughs> so, so do you know what I did? I'm playing distraction distraction while I work on this next product do you know what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and hired a marketing company like a full-on professional not one of my friends even though my friends were amazing and I paid them accordingly I needed some distance I needed some professional distance while I go and take care of like myself my other business remember I have two businesses <laughs> and it's been you know a pretty challenging time through everything that shall not be named. Anyway, so I needed I needed to be able to hand over a portion of my brain because I was getting so incredibly overwhelmed. Just trying to do everything. Like if you're in the wine world and you're a startup, like every fucking conversation that I had, especially with the winemakers, especially when sourcing my actual wine, like you gotta have thick skin. You've gotta have thick skin because all of these people come from wine backgrounds. They all have families that own gigantic wine corporations and they just do a little cute offshoot and it's so easy for them and everything's done in production and volume and it's just 
Who's texting me? Okay, let me put my phone on silent. It's so hard to step into this industry and not have all of that behind me. And I am so proud of myself for how far I've come. It's our five year anniversary. Yay! We've been in business for five years now and I am only just feeling like I'm starting to get it. Like I only just feel like I'm starting to get confident enough to reach out, ask the questions, follow up, know when someone's full of shit, know when someone's telling me the truth, pick good relationships. I, I have people in my phone now that I can start to call and ask for help, but it's taken me five years of working at this every, almost every day to get to this point. <laughs> it's taken so many failures and so many disaster stories like the courier and the smashed pouches and other things that I'm not going to talk about because I don't want to give it attention and energy. But yeah, it's our five year anniversary and I couldn't be prouder where we're at and I think things are just going to get better and bigger and this next product is, I hope in my soul, going to be the life changer, the game changer, the thing that you guys all end up knowing why not the brand for. So I'm putting a lot into that, but the distraction that's happening is I've hired this marketing company to work on the bottles. And if I'm being honest, because I have worked on those bottles for years, <laughs> I'm sick of looking at them. I'm sick of looking at them and they've almost lost that magic to me. But what I have to remember is you guys, like people in the public are only seeing them for the first time. You're only meeting Wine Not The Brand for the first time. You're only starting to build the relationship with me and, and my wine for the first time. Like you're only meeting these girls, my muses, for the first time. And I needed somebody with fresh eyes who is either passionate about it or is getting paid to work hard to do something about it. So hiring a marketing company that works on numbers only, on KPIs, they're not emotionally attached to me. They have a job to do, they're better at it than I am. It was risky financially. I, <laughs> it's scary what I did to gather those finances, but you gotta go all in. And if it's, it's, it's now or never. So yeah, I threw a lot at the pouches and at the marketing and building this brand and I'm taking a really, really big risk. Hopefully it works out. This is this is entrepreneurship, right? Like this is why I have my first business to fund my second business. And even though the first business has gone through its own challenges, it, it's it's my only income. So I have to use that income strategically. And I have never paid someone for marketing yet. This is the first time we've actually paid for marketing. I did one lot of what are they called influencers, like social media influencers, when we we launched Gorgeous George the wine about our dog. You, you gotta try different things, right? Okay, so the pouches sold out. We're on to pouch 2.0. I cannot freaking wait to show you these pouches. The next thing we did is we got a boat. <laughs> so we have a wine of the brand boat. Originally, we wanted to be actually selling wine pouches on the boat, but the weather has been horrendous, like horrendous. Like it's, I live on the Gold Coast and think it's storming outside. Like it's constantly raining. The weather has just been super shit. So we haven't done that, but we do have a branded boat, do all sorts of promo activities. We, I take the girls out there, we do photo shoots. It's been so much fun to have that. And it's good to try and get some, like I love community. I live on the Gold Coast. Most of the people who are buying the wine at the moment are from Canberra, which is where I was established. I lived there like basically my whole life. So it makes sense that people in Canberra are a bit more loyal to the brand. But if I can spread that, like eventually I wanna be Australia's best known millennial wine brand. That's my goal. Like I need to be the number one everywhere. But until that happens, I'm gonna start with where I'm at. So Gold Coast is where I'm trying to really put some roots down, get people excited about the brand. It works so well with the lifestyle here. So the boat was a bit of a, why not? <sighs> Career travels, boxes and logistics. Yeah. So that was drama. I ended up changing the packaging as well. So I ended up getting thicker boxes. I ended up, instead of using the paper shreddings, which is so beautiful and they're eco-friendly, but they just don't offer enough protection for these bottles or the pouches especially. I am now using those little, they're made out of like potato or something. You know, those little like pellet things that just disintegrate into nothing. So I'm trying so hard to keep this entire brand eco-friendly. It's so hard when you're a small brand and Every 
dollar that you get back counts and it matters because if you don't make income from your product, you have nothing to put forward. So the challenge that I've had so far is that everything has cost so much more than I thought it would and I am not making anything on these bottles at this stage. Like I could pump them to double the price and I probably still would not really break even to what I've actually spent so far on this brand. So finding something that's eco-friendly that is actually going to work because I cannot afford for these bottles and pouches to keep on breaking and to continue to spend time and money on boxes and couriers and it's just a pain in the ass. It's a challenge finding that line between results, things that work and things that are eco-friendly. Like I care so much about the impact this brand has on the world and society and nature and the environment. But there are some realities that have to be faced. Like the pouches are biodegradable, but like the little top on it, that's gonna have to be plastic. Like there is no way around that. And I'm trying to think of like, it's actually cheaper to, and, and better for the environment to send pouches because it's, you know, more carbon neutral effective delivery because it's not as heavy and they're smaller and whatnot. So I'm just like, these are the conversations I'm having with myself in my head about everything that I do. <laughs> like, do I color the boxes? Because if I get the boxes painted, it's going to like cost more money, but they're cute and it might work with my brand and then I might be able to do more good later. So it's so challenging. This is how fun is this video? I'm like challenges, but it's true. So anyway. We got new boxes, I put new packaging together, we're looking at it for the pouches as well, and we're now using Australia Post. I think that's all I can say about that. Marketing agency, they're amazing. Let me know if you see the ads on Facebook and Instagram. At the moment, we're in the first 30 days, so we're trialing and testing everything. So it like literally gets changed every couple of days, and there's all these different versions of copy and creative that are being put out. So at the moment, we're sort of trying to see what works <laughs> and what doesn't, and I am fascinated. I am so excited to see what ends up being our sweet spot with marketing and what really works on socials. And I really want to market on YouTube. I think videos are so fun, but I just have to calm the fuck down and just work with where I'm at. Facebook ads. Yeah, we tried that for pouches. They were great, but I'm glad I don't have to do them myself anymore. I'm glad that I have somebody else doing them. Australia versus offshore. What was that about? I don't know, that must have been a conversation I was having six months ago that I can't even remember. Everything that we do is Australian made. All of our bottles, like every, all of the existing stock is all Australian made. It's all basically Canberra local. All the new stuff, the pouches are, it's going to be ping ponged between places, which I'm not comfortable with. I am such a control freak. I love having everything where I can see it. I want to touch it. I want to meet people. I want to be there when, you know, everything happens. But at some stage I have to let go and for this brand to do what I want it to do long-term philanthropically I need to create a good product and for that I think I need to let go of some of the control and the desire to keep every single piece here and local so I'm gonna do obviously as much as I can to keep things local because that's just who I am but I'm learning that I'm gonna have to let go a little bit <laughs> so even if I'm supporting local businesses and hiring them to do certain things they may source things from other countries which again, with this current situation, who knows how long things are gonna take. So we'll figure it out. Okay, we did a trial of e-cards for Valentine's Day. Oh my God, that was so much fun. If you got an e-card from us, let me know what you thought of it because these girls that we were sending these e-cards to and surprise bottles of wine were loving it. And honestly, it was the best weekend for me. It was just so fulfilling. For me personally, seeing all these girls on social sharing, they got these little surprise bottles of wine and e-cards and it was Valentine's Day and I just loved it. So if I can find a way to integrate that in, like send, send wine to a girlfriend with e-cards, I totally will because that was just so much fun. And it's so like fun. Why not is all about fun. So if I can do that again, I totally will. Okay, direction of the brand, retail gifting, who we are and what do we specialize in? That was a conversation that was happening six months ago too. The direction of the brand. So I remember thinking like after the pouches like really exploded, I had a conversation with someone marketing related. I can't remember who I was talking to, but they asked the conversation like, where is this brand going? Like what, 
Like, where do you want to be? Like, are you building a retail brand? Are you building an online brand? Are you building, what are you building? And I was like, I don't fucking know. Like, can't I just do it all? So I've been trying to figure out where do I sit in the marketplace? Like, where do I fit? Like the cute aesthetic bottles, like I'm obsessed with them, <laughs> but have they been done? Like, did I miss the boat with that? The pouches, it's, I'm glad I was one of the first to get my foot in there and I'm I'm not backing down on these pouches. Like I will be in retail and I'm gonna be everywhere and everyone's gonna associate these pouches with Why Not The Brand. Like that is my goal. And if anyone comes up behind me, I don't fucking care because our brand's better. <laughs> it just is. I will always do it better. But saying that, like figuring out where I fit in the market, do I want to go into gifting? Do I want to go into the hampers? Do I want to focus only on getting my stuff in like Dan Murphy's and liquor stores? And in all honesty, I want them to approach me. I want them to come to me and be like, dude, your brand is so great. We want to stock it. Instead of me having to do the whole application, which is still open in my tab somewhere and I just haven't touched it. You know, who are we and what are we specializing in has been sort of ticking around in my brain, I had a conversation with somebody who wanted to be involved in the brand from an events perspective. They, they wanted to promote all these bottles and do events. But at the moment, I can't afford to do events with my current stock because it, it just costs too much to produce. And behind bars and restaurants and clubs, you don't see the brand. So I've got other ideas, which I'm waiting for something to arrive in the mail, which has been, again, forever. I think it even came from Sydney. What the hell? I really need to follow that. But there's something arriving which is going to help me play with a new concept for events style. So stay tuned on that. So see, a lot's happened in six months. Update for July. Pouches 2.0 in progress. Yes. First paid marketing 30 days. Yes. Doing socials myself again. <laughs> I have just found that no one does it better than me. <laughs> like the aesthetic, sure. Sometimes my social girls have hit the nail on the head and I've, I've been really proud to look at my Instagram page. But most of the time, it's just not good enough. Like it's not what I want. I'm paying these social girls X amount, like a lot, a lot more than most people get. I did my research and I'm overpaying my social media like posting girls and they're consistently under delivering. And regardless of their reasons, and these are people that I love as humans, like I love them so much, but at some stage you have to separate business and, business and personal. And I just find I was constantly getting frustrated at the people that were running my social media accounts because I always want more. And is it like, that's being an entrepreneur. You always want more, you always want better. And I was seeing these girls who have other businesses putting so much love into their own businesses. And my account just kind of like came second. And while I understand that, for me, it's not a standard that I want to accept. So I couldn't afford to keep paying the money that I was paying every single month to these girls and not get a result. The sales were not coming through. The sales were only coming through when I would put an organic post up about my story. So I figured, fuck it. Like I will find a way to make this work, even if it's temporary, even if our Instagram isn't great, who cares? Like whatever, there are other ways to make sales hence the marketing company <laughs> and we're going to work on the website. We've got new products. Like there are other ways to do this as opposed to leaning full time on Instagram, which is not my strength. And I've just been let down that many times. So I'm doing my own socials at the moment. And that's just where I'm at because startup life. And then the last thing that I have on my notes is that I had a conversation about traditional marketing with a company that does like, don't laugh, <laughs> billboards, bins, bus stops, radio, things like that. And it was an interesting conversation. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna go down that path necessarily, or it's definitely not gonna happen right now. But who's not to say that when I launch pouches, I don't go 100% crazy and target the entire Gold Coast coastal area and just fucking spam my pouches in everyone's faces and sell out in a week. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I'm figuring things out as I go. As you can see by my notes, things change so incredibly quickly and challenges pop up all the time in this industry. So we'll see what happens. But the conversation is there. Now I've opened the door to paid marketing for the first time in five years. I'm curious. I'm curious to see what's going to work. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see what's going to work. So cheers to our update. Thank you for following along on this YouTube. I love that you guys are getting involved and watching the behind the scenes of all of this. Hopefully this is interesting to you. 
<laughs> and um, hopefully I will do a better job in actually being consistent with this channel and um, posting more than once a year. So cheers. Go to winenotthebrand.com if you haven't seen our wines. Follow me at wine not the brand as well on instagram we have a facebook page it sucks i don't really do much on there but you can follow that too definitely go to why not and subscribe in there to be on our database because on the database is where i send through sales specials but also keep you updated on when the pouches are actually finally going to arrive again so the database will definitely find out before social media so cheers and thank you for your support <laughs>